So today we're talking about the five things we know about full self-driving with the Tesla Semi. The first thing we know is that the Semi does not currently have full self-driving activated. Now it might have lane assist, we're not sure about that, but we do know that the full self-driving, the beta features we see on the cars is not activated. If this was the case, you definitely would have heard Elon Musk and the team mention it in their in the delivery event, and they did not. There wasn't a single word about that, and I don't think this was a PR stunt to, to get drivers more excited about the truck. Uh, drivers aren't the, usually the ones buying the truck. It is usually the, um, the management team, and management is always looking for cost reductions. Safer trucks means less maintenance, less downtime, and it also, if they can get rid of their drivers, drivers are one of the most expensive parts of the vehicle, they definitely would have gone through that. Next, the next thing we know is what Tesla told us about full self-driving um, and the features they plan to offer on it when they announced this truck back in 2017. Back then, they announced that they were going to have platooning, which is where you have multiple vehicles following each other. So one driver um, and three trucks. The, the front truck gets a driver. Everybody else follows behind. Um, they were planning on this. Uh, this feature may have fallen off, but... They definitely did say that they were going to have full self-driving equipped on these vehicles. So we know that each of these vehicles is going to come with the hardware equipped to eventually get there. Um, and De Tesla definitely has a game plan to implement this in the future. The third thing we know about full self-driving with these trucks is we know how many cameras they have and their placement. They got the standard three that are pointed through the windshield out the front of the truck. Then they have three on each of the truck's rear view mirrors. Now, we're not quite sure what these are, but these should replace the A and the B pillar cameras that you'd see on most Teslas. And then they have one right in the front lower bumper. This is in contrast to the camera most Teslas have on the back bumper. Tesla won't have one on the back of the semi, of course, because that'll just be staring right at the underbelly of any trailer hooked up to the truck. The fourth thing we know about full self-driving with the semi is actually what we know about driving the standard FSD beta. So I've been a beta tester for well over a year now, and I know that as soon as you hook any trailer up to the vehicle, it automatically restricts access to the full self-driving features. All the features are disabled. That is because hooking the trailer up to the vehicle drastically changes the, the type of style needed to stay on the road. And if autopilot does not know these changes, it will become dangerous. The fifth thing we know is the obstacles Tesla will need to overcome before they activate full self-driving on a truck such, such as the semi. Now the semi is always gonna be hooked up to the trailer. Um, the, the different number of cameras and the different locations, as far as I've read online, is not going to be much of a problem to overcome. The thing it's going to have trouble adjusting to, from what I have been able to understand, is actually driving with the trailer. See, the thing is, the trailer is not going to have any sensors, any cameras, or any alterations on it. Because if you did so, the truck would only work when hooked up to that specific trailer. Most drivers, they drive around, um, and they'll drop one trailer and pick up another, and they, they could they could hook up to, th to three or four trailers in a single day, which means unless every trailer has a special package, the truck has to be have all the capability um, programmed right into it to be able to drive the truck. Now, if you know anything about Elon Musk, he can say, well, if a human can do it without any additional sensors on the trailer, then our self-driving computer should be able to do it too which I, seem, I, I think is totally reasonable. But what they're going to have to do, uh, tell the car the type of trailer that's hooked up, the height, the weight, the center of mass, and the length of the wheelbase, and the length of the trailer. So, for example, if you have a 20-foot trailer and the wheelbase is only 18 feet back, you have a 2-foot overhang that you have to be careful not to swing into some cars. That gets drastically different when you have a 53-foot trailer and your wheels are only 45 feet back now you're talking about a an eight foot overhang past those wheels that you have to be careful not only that your wheels don't hit the curb when going around a corner too tight hit the curb hit a pole hit a car but also that your overhang doesn't side swipe any vehicles in the back now this is just one of the many problems another problem is with a big trailer in the back if it's empty your trailer can get blown around the wind and it's harder to stay in the center of your lane but if you're full, you have to be really careful when cornering because your center of gravity could be five, six feet in the air and even a slight turn could be pulling you over. But let's say you're loaded with concrete that sits really low to the bed. You could have a really low center of mass and not need to worry about it at all. 
All of these things need to be taken into account before the computer can take over the driving. I think it will be a while before we see Tesla activating the full self-driving beta on the semi, but I do think Tesla is working on it. And with these trucks on the road, we should be seeing it sooner rather than later. Um, I just wanna take a moment to thank everybody who subscribed. I am just passing the 1000 mark and I'm pretty excited about that. And I hope to be keep bringing you guys great content.